for more on this disturbing trend, Mariam Karimi joins us. She's assistant professor in the Department of Environmental Health Services at the University of Alabama School of Public Health. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Now, the new atlas highlights the acute vulnerability of South America to extreme climate events. Why is that the case, and what does that mean for everyday life for people in the region? Well, uh, South America has actually been going through a lot of climate change ever since the 1930s and more so in the 1960s. And so they've been going through extreme um, extreme drought and also unusual rains. Uh, and the main reason behind that is climate change and air pollution. And so if you really think about it, the increase of temperature that is mainly caused because of the climate change, the sea surface temperature also starts to increase. And as a result of that, there is a shift in the lower level westerly winds that would normally bring humid moisture and a lot of moisture from the Pacific into the continent. And because of this shift, now there is a lot of, of um, you know, extreme uh, dry air that will end up in Argentina, in Peru, and also in, um, uh, in the western side of, uh, of South America. And right. because of this, uh, there is, um, you know, a lack of uh, uh, crop yield, and uh, a lot of people will be suffering as a result of that. So then in terms of vulnerability and how that's going to impact economies, which countries are in the best position and worst position to navigate this? Well, South America in general is a climate, in terms of its economy, it's pretty low developed in compared to other areas in the world. And so when there is, uh, you know, any sort of like difficulty in the human system, it will become or if there is any sort of like difficulty in the climate change, it becomes very difficult for the people to actually adjust to this. Um, and so countries that are, um, you know, have a stronger uh, economy, they are, they are the ones who are going to be doing much better. Uh, countries that are mainly based on their agriculture will not be doing so much. Now, we saw that the studies also noted that the increase in extreme weather could be caused by a combination of both human-induced climate change and natural climate variability. But how much can human beings hope to slow climate change, especially now because the pandemic has shifted resources away from this focus on extreme weather right now? Oh, this is, this is very interesting. Just think of it, how much of the pandemic has had impact on our climate. Um, and I'll just give you an example. Because of the pandemic, we have less people that are out on the street. Uh, there are less factories that are, are, are operating. And because of this, uh, the level of air pollution is much less. Um, our wildlife got a break from all this and kind of recovered from it. So just imagine if globally we could come together and have a global uniform effort that could help with reducing the ecological footprint that we have that would be very monumental. And so then are you seeing any ventures or movements really showing promise towards limiting and managing extreme climate events? Oh yes, definitely. If we could just move away from the carbon-based economy um, and invest significantly more in our renewable energy, uh, like uh, you know, bringing in more electrical cars or uh, look up for all the alternative fuel energy, that will help the planet and will also help the economy and make our planet a safer place. And just very quickly, we have about 15 seconds. Given the trends that we're already seeing with weather, what other sort of weather changes can we expect in the next five to 10 years if we stay at the pace that we're currently moving? Well, the climate is going to increase in temperature. Um, and so what we're going to have within the next five to 10 years will be very extreme weather events that are going to be very high in intensity and frequency. So if you want to just think about it in terms of US, um, the weather in many cities of US will look just like the weather that we have in the south. Um, and that means the average um, summer temperature will be about 81, may not seem a lot, but that by itself has a huge impact because in between these averages, you have those extreme events extreme weather events and globally if you want to think about it uh, we will have these increased temperatures that will be up to seven degree fahrenheit so and many parts of the world will heat up and there will be changes in the weather pattern um you know anywhere um like 
Canada, North US, and also Europe will get a lot more rain and we'll notice a lot of you know, uh, intense swings right. between the weather patterns for California from very extremes to extreme uh, drought to um, long periods of rain um, and you know, rainy days. So that's what we're going to be getting within the next couple of years or so and it'll get more uh, intensified. All right, Mariam Karini, the assistant professor in the Department of Environmental Health Services at the University of Alabama School of Public Health. Thank you.